This week, our major comprehension skill that we're going to be working on is comparing and contrasting um, characters from the story. So when we compare and contrast, we're talking about how are two things alike, or when we contrast, we're talking about how two th things, two or more, so it could be more than just two things, but how are they different? So when we compare, we're talking about how they're alike. When we contrast the items, we're talking about how they are different. And in this week's story, we're going to be comparing and contrasting the characters. We're also going to come back to um, the skill of inferencing. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. When we infer, that's when we use the text evidence. Okay, that could be illustrations, it could be actually the words in the story, but our text evidence is what we find in the story. What does the author actually tell us? So we use the text evidence with our background knowledge. Remember, background knowledge are the things we already know in our brains from our own personal experiences. So when we infer, we take the text evidence and our background knowledge, and we put all that together, to try to make a smart guess or to figure something out from the story that the author doesn't come right out and tell us. It's not clearly stated in the story. So we will be doing some inferring this week as we read. So our story this week is titled Pop's Bridge. And the story is written by Eve Bunting and it's illustrated by C.F. Payne. As we read, I want you to pay close attention to the characters in the story. After we read them, we're going to be comparing and contrasting the characters. My pop is building the Golden Gate Bridge. Almost every day after school, Charlie Shu and I go to Fort Point and watch. The bridge will stretch across the bay from San Francisco to Marin. People said this bridge couldn't be built. Some call it the Impossible Bridge. They say the bay is too deep. The current's too strong. The wind's blowing in from the ocean too fierce. But I know my pop can do it. Whenever I say he's building the bridge, mom laughs. There's a crew of more than a thousand men working on that bridge, Robert, including Charlie's dad, she reminds me. I know that, but I just shrug. To me, it's pop's bridge. Pops, a high iron man, balancing on the slatted catwalks, spinning and bending the cables. He climbs so high that sometimes clouds come down around his shoulders. When the fog rolls in and he disappears completely, that's why the high iron men are called skywalkers. Charlie's dad is a painter. The painters start work long before the bridge is even finished. My pop says if it weren't for them, the bridge would rust away. But I think he's just saying that to be nice. The Skywalkers have the most important job of all. At Fort Point, I look for pop through the binoculars. Mom lends me. The workers look alike in their overalls and swabby hats. But I can always find my pop because of the red kerchief he ties around his throat. It's our scarlet signal. I don't worry much about him on days when the sun sparkles on the water, when the sailboats skim below. It's so beautiful. I can forget that it's dangerous, too. But when the wind blows through the golden gate, the men cling to the girders like caterpillars on a branch. On foggy days, my hands sweat on the binoculars. Where is he? When I find him, I try not to look away as though the force of my eyes can keep him from falling. Now this makes me think that um, he's very nervous for his dad. He says that when the weather's nice, he doesn't worry so much, but on windy days or days when it's foggy, we can see clues in the story here that um, Charlie, or Robert, is very worried about his dad. The author doesn't necessarily come right out and tell us that, but we see clues. Like his hands sweat. He thinks the force of his eyes can keep him from falling. So we can use those clues to make a smart guess that he's very worried about his, day, his dad on days when the um, wind blows or when it's really foggy. It makes his job even more dangerous. 
At my house, Charlie and I work on a jigsaw puzzle Mom bought us. When it's done, it will show us how an artist thinks the bridge will look. Charlie and I work on the puzzle most every day. Bending over it, I feel like I am building the real thing along with Pop. I'm a Skywalker, too. We're almost done, Charlie says. I wonder which of us will put in the last piece. I shrug, but when what he says makes me think, my pop built that bridge. He should set the last puzzle in peace. That's only fair. Even though Charlie might think his dad should do it, when Charlie isn't looking, I slip one of the pieces into my pocket. Later, I hide it into my room. I'm saving it for pop. So, again, we see a couple of clues here um, that Robert thinks his dad's job is just a little more important than Charlie's. They're, they both work on the bridge. They're both building the bridge. Both their jobs are dangerous. But Robert seems to think being a Skywalker is kind of more important than just painting the bridge like Charlie's dad. And we see clues here. Um, right here it says... Uh, my pop says if it weren't for the painters, the bridge would rust away. But I think he's just saying that to be nice. The Skywalkers have the most important job of all. And we go back to the page we just were visiting. He makes another comment here that makes us infer he thinks his dad's job is more important than anybody else's on the bridge. He says my pop built that bridge. Charlie might think his dad should do it, but again, we see clues here that he thinks being a Skywalker is more important than being a painter. The impossible bridge is nearly finished. One evening, Mom, Pop, and I walk down to Fort Point. The bridge hangs between stars and sea. It's like a giant harp. My Pop says, a harp for the angels to play. I look up at him, and I can tell this wasn't just a job to my Pop. He loves the bridge. In San Francisco, there is great excitement. Everyone is waiting for the opening day. Charlie and I have watched nearly every bit of the bridge go up. We saw the two spans come together from opposite directions. We saw them meet. We saw the roadway go in. And my pop did it. No one could be as proud as I am. Not even Charlie. After all, my dad is a Skywalker. Again, we see here another clue that Robert thinks Skywalker's jobs are kind of more important than any of the other people working on the bridge. And then one day, something terrible happens. Charlie and I are watching as the scaffolding pulls away from the bridge. There is a noise like a train wreck as the scaffolding crashes down into the safety net. The net tears loose and the men go with it into the swirling tide. I can't breathe. I can't think. But then I look hard through the binoculars and see Pop still on the bridge, his red kerchief whipping. Pop, I whispered in relief. Beside me, Charlie is screaming, Where's my dad? Where's my dad? We had seen him working closely to the scaffolding, and I can't see him now. You can just kind of guess how these two boys must be feeling from our own background knowledge, maybe you've seen a, something terrible happen and you have that kind of feeling in your gut that just makes you scared. They're worried about their dads being okay. Robert sees his dad in his red, red kerchief, but Charlie can't find his dad. So we can infer here that Charlie is very, very scared and worried for his dad. We'll find him, I promise. We have to. I sweep the binoculars up and down the bridge cables, looking at every painter hanging high on Jacob's ladder or swinging in the, uh, in the bosun chairs like a knot on a rope. But be there, Mr. Shoe, I plead, and then spot him over by the cross girder. I yell. Charlie fumbles for the binoculars, and I help him. He looks where I point. He's there. He's safe, Charlie gasps. The next day, we find out that only two of the 12 men in the water were saved. I think that. I think and think about that day. At night, half asleep, I see the bridge shake. I hear the crash. One of those men in the water could have been Pop. 
or Charlie's dad. I finally understand and I feel ashamed. Equal work, equal danger for Skywalkers and for painters. The work goes on. A new safety net is put in place. Pop says there is less talking and joking now among the men. There is a remembering, but the bridge must be finished. And at last, it's, it is. We watch through Mom's binoculars as the golden spike is drilled in at the center of the main span. Now the celebration can begin. On opening day, no cars are allowed. Thousands of people walk and dance and roller skate across the bridge, including us. I wear Pop's red kerchief around my na neck. There's a man riding a unicycle. There's another one on stilts. Navy biplanes fly above the great still towers, and battleships and cruisers sail below the bridge and into the San Francisco Bay. Wind strums its music through the stretch of the cables, and I think of my pop's harp. That night, our family has its own party with Charlie and his dad. There's stewed chicken and Chinese noodle dish Charlie's dad made, and a snickerdoodle pie. The jigsaw puzzle sits on the coffee table with a gap in the middle. I've searched and searched for that missing piece, my mom said. A good thing we didn't leave our bridge. With a space like that, Mr. Shu said. Pop chuckles. We'd be working still. It's time. I slip upstairs to the hidden puzzle piece. Then I find scissors and cut the piece carefully in half. I'll go back down and put a piece, put a half piece in Mr. Shu's hand and the other in my pop's. Finish it, I say. It's your bit bridge. It belongs to both of you. My mother raises her eyebrow, and Charlie says, Hey, where? But I just watch as the two pieces fit in so perfectly, so smoothly. Team effort, Pop says. We raise our glasses of sarsaparilla to celebrate the laborers and riveters, riveters, the carpenters and the painters and the skywalkers, all the men who work together to build the most beautiful bridge in the world. So here on these last few pages of the story, we see that Robert finally understands that even though he thinks he's very proud of his dad and his job and the work he's doing on the bridge, it's not just the Skywalkers that are important. The painters are important too. They're both in danger when they work on that bridge each day. And both their jobs are equally important to finishing the bridge. As he cuts the final puzzle piece in half, and allows Charlie's dad half of the piece and his dad half of the piece to finish the puzzle together. That's kind of symbolic of Robert realizing that like it says here, the bridge was a team effort. It wasn't his dad's bridge, it was everyone's bridge that worked together to build it. Now, uh, I have a Venn diagram for you guys. And I want you to think about the two characters from the story. Robert's dad, who is the Skywalker, and Charlie's dad, who is the painter. And I want you to write down some thoughts and ideas you have about the two characters. How the two characters are alike, you're going to put in the middle. So ideas that describe Robert and Charlie's dad will go here in the middle. How are they alike? On the outsides of the circle, you're going to list ways that Robert's dad and Charlie's dad were different. Now I want you guys to fill us in with your thoughts and we will go over this together shortly.